All right, in this video I want to show you how to solve uh, just two quick examples of quadratic equations. Um, I did show in a previous video of mine, first of all, what we mean by a quadratic equation. Quadratic, when you read or hear that word, I know maybe the number four comes to mind, but, uh, but in this case, quadratic, as far as math is concerned, means that the largest exponent that you're going to see is a two. All right. By the way, this p also has an exponent over here of 1, but if the largest exponent you see is a 2, it's called a quadratic. All right. What makes it equa an equation simply is that it's got an equal sign in it. Okay, so we're going to deal with this quadratic equation, and we're going to factor. But before we do that, this equation is set up a little differently. What we want in this equation is all the stuff on one side and equals 0 all by itself on another side. Now, there are a couple of things we could do to kind of get all the terms together. We could move this 6p squared over to the right-hand side, or we could move these two terms, 4 minus 5p, over to the left-hand side. And it probably makes more sense to move one term, right, less work, than it is to move two terms. But in this case, since our quadratic, which is 6p squared, our quadratic term here, um, is a positive number. That, that coefficient there is a positive 6. We actually want to keep it positive. So it turns out that we should actually move these two on the right-hand side over to the left-hand side. Okay, now, it's going to be wicked easy to do that. What we do simply is, all right, so our left-hand side looks just like this. That stays exactly the same. It's not going anywhere. It's going to remain on the left-hand side. But when we move these two terms over to the left-hand side, they change their signs. All right? So when we change sides, we change signs. A little, a little something, a little saying there that you guys can uh, hopefully remember. When you change sides, you change their signs. Right? So this 4, which is a positive 4, on the left-hand side is going to be a negative 4. And this negative 5p on the right-hand side, when you move it over, is going to be a positive 5p. Now, the other day, I saw some of my students do this. I saw them move it over just like this. Hey, I see a positive 4. It comes over to the left side as a minus 4. I see a minus 5p. It comes over to the right hand to the left hand side as a positive 5p. And now hopefully you see that we've moved these two over. I've got nothing on the right hand side, just set it equal to zero. So I saw a couple of my students do that the other day and I thought, hmm, there's something a little wrong with this equation though. Do you notice that these terms are not in descending order? Um, the proper way to bring these two terms over and to rewrite this quadratic equation is to start with the p squared term put their p term next, all right, by the way, this is the variable p, it could be x or m or anything else, and then put the constant term, the guy that, the term that doesn't have a p, we put that one last. That's the proper order. This is the order we like, okay? Not this one, so I'm just going to cross that one out. That's, that's the incorrect order right there. Okay, so now that we have this in the correct order, we are going to factor this down on the left-hand side. Now, I'm not going to show you a lot of factoring techniques because um, I sh I've shown you that in previous videos. You can look it up elsewhere. There are several different ways to tackle this. Um, maybe one way that you learn or are learning is something called factor by grouping, where you start with that 6 and you multiply it by this negative 4, which is a negative 24. Right? And then off on the side, you're trying to figure out what two numbers multiply to give you negative 24 but when you add them, gives you a positive 5. You rewrite this trinomial as four terms, then you do this thing called factor by grouping, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I kind of like this other method that's called, well, at least I call it, guess and check. All right, guess and check. I'm going to try to split up that 6p squared as 3p and 2p. A couple of different ways to split up negative 4, but let's try it out this way. Let's try it out as 4 and 1. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, I know the signs are going to be different. That's another video I've made. All right, you can automatically tell by looking at this sign right here. If that's a minus, the signs will be different. So, yeah, there we go. I think I did this right, and this is called guess and check, so I just guessed here. But let's check. The inners, right, the inners in FOIL, the I in FOIL stands for inners, would give me a positive 8p if I multiply them. The outers, right, the O in FOIL, the outers, 
Uh, if I multiply, then gives me a negative 3p, and 8p minus 3p gets us back to that positive 5p. Cool, so I know I factored correctly. And my last step is, and I showed this in another video too, see if you can jump straight to the answers, the two answers, right? Um, technically, by the way, mathematically speaking, we're going to set each of these parentheses equal to zero because we're multiplying two things and our product is zero, so one of them has to be zero, or maybe both of them are zero. But um, the shortcut step is to change this sign from positive 4 to negative 4, and this coefficient of 3 goes to the bottom, goes to the denominator. So there's one answer out of that one. Same thing here, I'm going to change this negative 1 into a positive 1, and that coefficient of 2 moves to the bottom. So there are my two answers. All right, let's spend a little bit more time working out one more with an extra step involved, and then we'll call it quits for this video. Here's another quadratic equation I want us to try out. All right, it starts off kind of the same way as what we just saw. This, this one has a w as its variable. Right. And in similar setup to the previous problem that we just did, look, we want all the terms on one side and equals 0 on the other side. So instead of moving this term from the left side over to the right hand side, let's move these two terms that don't have our quadratic term in it, right, quadratic largest exponent is 2, let's move these two guys over to the left hand side. And when you change sides, you change signs. Remember also to put these variables, or the, rather these terms, in descending order according to the, uh, the variable's exponents, right? So we've got 6w squared minus 20w minus 16 equals 0, right? Because we just changed sides and changed their signs. Now we've got the equals 0. That's what I was after. And now I have to factor the left-hand side. But there's one more step that's involved in this problem that we didn't do in the previous one. And that is, do you see that there is a GCF in all three of these terms? Do you see a GCF? The GCF, if there is one, is the first thing we should do Right, we, the first thing we should take out, if possible, in this case, guys, it's a 3. Uh, take that back. 3 doesn't go into 20. So it's a 2. Yeah, there we go. That's what I meant to say. All right? It's a 2. So if I factor out a 2, do you see I'm left with 3w squared minus, let's see, half of 20 is 10w, and half of 16 is 8 equals 0. Right? So we just took out our GCF of 2. And I've got this trinomial. This thing can be factored. Again, I'm not going to show you factoring right now. That's something that you should uh, be able to, to learn or probably already have learned on your own. You could do factor by grouping or guess and check. Well, it turns out the two factored forms are 3w plus 2 and w minus 4. Now, what about that 2 that we took out at the very beginning, that GCF? Well, that's still part of my uh, equation here. That comes on down. But I want you to see that when we use the quote unquote shortcut to come up with our answers here, that 2 has no effect in our answer. Okay, so the shortcut answer here was 4. The shortcut answer out of this one was, let's see, change that positive 2 to a negative 2. The 3 moves down to the bottom. So it turns out, guys, that these are my two answers here for w. Okay, these are my two answers, negative 2 thirds and a positive 4. But since this GCF right here didn't have a variable in it, it did not have a W in it at all, right? We only took out a 2, that was it. Then this is not another answer. This is, you know, in other words, W equals 0 is not another or separate additional answer. Like this, this quadratic equation only has two answers at most because it's quadratic. Um, you will learn later on, maybe in math, that if you have a cubic equation that's largest exponent is a 3, it could have three answers. A quartic equation, quartic equation, that's how you pronounce uh, one with largest exponent is a 4, might have one, two, three, four uh, possible answers out of it. But when you're dealing with a quadratic equation, at most, at most, um, two possible answers, not three, okay? Um, and let me just close off with this. What if, what if we had, I know this is not the problem here, but what if we had taken out a 2w, um, you know, from, from the, uh, the GCF to start with? Don't, maybe don't want to write this one down, all right, because I'm just making this up right now. What if, though, that GCF did have a variable in it? Well, it turns out then that 0 would be part 
of the solution set. All right? 0 would be one of your possible answers. Because remember, what's mathematically happening behind this shortcut is that you're setting each of these things equal to 0 and solving for the variable. Well, I hope that helps. Good luck.